So here's the third video in the series on BCA tables. Here I'm going to go through limiting reagents and how to do some calculations on this. If you follow the description, you'll find a link to this. You can go ahead and try these problems first if you would like to see if you get them or maybe watch one and then try the second one. First step, just like before, we're going to write out the reaction. Here we're doing oxygen and hydrogen gas. So we have H2, this O2, building water. The gas is for all. And we're going to have a 2, 1, Ratio. So for these, we're given two different amounts. We're given 42.3 grams of oxygen gas, and we're given 3.92 grams of hydrogen gas. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take those and change those into moles. So 42.3 grams of oxygen gas, uh, oxygen is 32 grams per mole, comes up to be 1.32 moles of oxygen. And 3.92 grams of hydrogen gas divided by 2.02 gives us 1.94 moles. Starting with zero product, we assume. So really at this point, what we don't know is we don't know whether this will be the limiting reagent and this will run out, or whether this will be the limiting reagent. So the best key I can give you for that is just pick one. Don't worry about it, just pick one, and then go from there. So for example, in this one, uh, I'm going to start off with the incorrect answer. Um, and I'm going to assume that the 1.32, since it's smaller, runs out. So if that's the case, if this is going to get completely used up, I'm going to end up with zero. What you then need to do is you need to look at, okay, well, what would the other one be in that case? I mean, the two things are going to happen. This is going to work out or it's going to be impossible. So a two to one ratio here implies that I would need twice as much hydrogen. So I would need to react 2.64 that doesn't make any sense because I don't have that many. So what that implies then is the hydrogen is going to actually react first, or, or actually react in completion, and that's going to be my limiting reagent. So since this didn't work, we know that this will be the limiting reagent. I'm going to mark that the limiting reagent is the hydrogen gas. So this is going to drop then by 1.94. And the O2 is going to drop by half that amount. For every two of these, I only need one of those. So 0 0.92, 0 0.97. So 0.97 moles. It's going to be how much this decreases, and that's going to leave us an excess of 0.35 moles. Okay, so now that we've situated what's actually going to happen, now we can figure out how much water we're going to make. So the water, we're going to have be the same as the amount of hydrogen that reacts will be how much water is produced. It's a 2 to 2 ratio or 1 point. So we're going to increase this by 1.94 moles. Alternatively, we could have said that it's going to be double this amount, which again gives us the 1.94, because you make two waters for every one ounce. But at the end of the day, you're going to end up with the following. Minutes. You're going to end up with 1.94 moles of water, 0.35 moles of the oxygen. Your hydrogen will be the limiting reagent. It's gone. So you have some excess of oxygen, and you have, you know, uh, this is how much product you make. Now at that point, you can then change those back into grams. The oxygen ends up being 11.2 grams, and the steam ends up being 35.0 grams. So at the end, that's what I have to use. So if you want to go ahead and try that for the next problem, you can go ahead and give it a whirl. Number two here, we have 80 grams of calcium chloride. That is calcium chloride. And that is 0.721 moles. And that's dissolved in water. We mix it with another water solution, 157.2 grams of silver nitrate. So we need to change that into moles as well. That is 0.925 moles. Those are going to react. We're going to make two silver chlorides and a calcium nitrate. We'll worry about the products in a second. We know we're going to start with none. So again, we need to go through it. Now, sometimes you might actually be able to tell just by looking. So for example, in this one, I know I need twice as much of this as I do of this. And I don't have twice as much. This will run up. So I'm going to go ahead and select that to start. This will be my limiting range. Let's double check first. So I run out of this. For every two of these, I only need one of these. So I need half the amount. So I'm going to take this 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 0.925, 
0.463 is half that amount, and that's going to leave me with an excess of calcium chloride. I'm going to have 0.258 moles left. Okay, so that's what's going to happen with our reactants. Now we can pay attention to the products. Now that we've assigned that this is our limiting reagent, and this is our excess reagent. Now we can look at what's going to happen here. So for the silver nitrate, every one of those makes a silver chloride. So we're going to end up gaining 0.925 of that. And then our calcium chloride we can use for our other value here, 0.463. Of course, we can also go through and do the half gain. Half of these turn into these. That would work as well. At the end of the day, we will have 0.925 moles of this, 0.463 moles of this, the calcium nitrate, and we'll have 0 0.258 moles of calcium chloride left over. Now in grams, that comes out to be 28.6 grams. For this, that ends up being, for the 0.925, I have 132.6 grams of that, which I'll round to 133, and at 76.0 grams of this. Okay, and I'm just multiplying by the molar masses to get it. All right, one more to give you a little practice if you're still hanging in there. So bromine is added to sodium iodide. We'll see a single replacement reaction to produce sodium bromide and iodine. Okay, so our 12.2 grams of liquid bromine is 0 0.0763 moles. And our sodium iodide is 0.325 moles. So again, this is a situation where I can tell that this is probably going to be the thing that runs out. This looks like it's, oh, a good four times as much as that, and I only need twice as much. So let's assume this is my limiting reagent. Let's see how that goes. I would lose 0 0.0763 gram moles of this. I'm going to lose double that of this, which is 0.1526. So I run out of this, I have some excess of this, we are correct. Um, and we end up with 0.1724 moles excess. Okay, so now we can go ahead and do our products. Starting with zero and zero, we're going to pick up 0 0.0763 moles of this. We're going to pick up 0.1526 moles of this. So at the end of the day, we will have 0 0.0763 moles of iodine, 0.1526 moles of sodium bromide, 0.1724 moles of sodium iodide remaining. Grams, that would be 25.8 grams of NAI. We would have 15.7 grams of sodium bromide and 19.4 grams of the iodine. And of course, each one of those, I'm just multiplying that by their molar mass. So that's it. Really the key here is that at the beginning you go through and you figure out, you just you can even, you really just can guess and say, you know, do I get a negative result and that's not working and that's incorrect? Or you can just or you get it right and you end up with an excess and zero. That's what you're looking for. A positive amount of excess and it's in a one reactant that's run out completely. Um, after that, you've set your changes, you can use your coefficients to figure out how much the product you make. And then you can go ahead at the end and you can pull out in moles sometimes, and sometimes in the watt grams, and you can multiply by the molar mass. 